Hey, it's Kyle here, and I thought I'd take time today to give you a little tour of my bookshelves. Um, so I hope you'll enjoy it. And if you have any questions about any of the books I um, mentioned, um, just um, post it as a comment below, and I'll be sure to answer any questions you might. Okay, here are my um, bookshelves. I have four of them. They are um, right at six feet tall. Um, so I have lots and lots of room for books. And as you see, I'm... Um, the moment I have some shelves dedicated to some other stuff but you know it gives me a lot of flexibility so I don't have to buy any um, additional bookshelves for a long long time okay um, I've divided my bookshelves now by fiction and non-fiction so I'll start with the, the non-fiction books first um, first book Watership Down and I'll I won't touch on all the books I'll just briefly mention some of them uh, Watership Down is a great book then um, you have the Foundation series here by Isaac Asimov. Um, all the Ray Bradbury books I have, like Fahrenheit 451, Dandelion One, um, Something Wicked This Way Comes, um, The Martian Chronicles. Um, huge Bradbury fan. Then you have um, um, Max Brooks' books, The Zombie Survival Guide and World War Z. Um, Robert Buechner's uh, The Orphanage series which is a sci-fi series, sci series I highly recommend. Um, some older books at the end. Then you have a series by um, Jake Campbell, The Lost Fleet um, series. Then um, there's The Hunger Games books. I'm looking forward to the movie. Heart of Darkness um, by Joseph Conrad, a great book, really enjoy. Um, some Michael Crichton books I have and some Classics um, by um, Dickens and Daniel Defoe. Then you transition into my um, Ken Follett books, one of my favorite authors. And um, there at the very end is one of my favorite books of all time, The Pillars of the Earth. Next shelf down, have a few more Ken Follett books. Um, the Last Babylon by Pat Frank, great book. Um, Selfie's World, an interesting uh, philosophy fiction book, which is a rare genre. <laughs> you have Lord of the Flies. Um, you have um, Frank Herbert's Dune, um, The Odyssey, Brave New World, which out of all the, like, the classic books ever written, read, sorry, um, Brave New World is my least favorite. I absolutely hate that book. Um, I despise it. It's awful in my opinion, but hey, uh, I still read it, so I got it. Um, to Kill a Mockingbird, which is my favorite book of all time. The Road, a great book by Cormac McCarthy. Um, then you have some George Orwell books, um, Animal Farm, and then you transition next shelf. You have 1984, um, Jackson Pierce's Sister Red, which I just read um, fairly recently. Um, Philip Schrott, Roth's The Plot Against America, which is a great book. Um, complete works of William Shakespeare. I think that's something that everybody should have. Then I transition to another one of my favorite authors, Harry Turtledove, and um, I by far have the most books of him than any author I do, so you have, I'll break these down by the series I have of him. Um, first you have um, his Atlantis series, so these three books. Um, then you have um, basically how I, what I term his um, Civil War series, which is basically his alternate history if the Confederacy had won the Civil War, and how that would have changed world, war, world history, so all these books are that um, series. Then the next three are uh, kind of a Civil War slash fantasy um, series, uh, Marching Through Peachtree, uh, which kind of covers Sherman's march to the sea through Georgia, but sets it in a um, fantasy world with magic, which is a kind of interesting take on it. Then you have two books here, um, which basically focus on what would have happened if Japan had invaded Hawaii after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Uh, standalone book and then these books are um, all about um, kind of sci-fi slash alternate history of what would have happened during World War II if during the middle of the war um, world, the world had been faced by alien invasion and how the warring um, countries would have reacted so that's a very interesting series um, a few Mark Twain books a few Jules Byrne books and then um, last few 
um, non, uh, sorry, fiction books. Um, Herman Walk is the last ones I have. I have several of his books I really enjoy a lot. So those are my fiction books. So that's basically one bookshelf and um, top shelf the next one. Alright, um, now I'll move on to uh, the tour of um, my non-fiction books. This will go a little quicker, so I'll just briefly kind of go by slowly so you can see the titles. But um, I'm really into history. I'm also really into politics. Um, so a lot of these books focuses on um, either history or politics. You'll see some philosophy books in there. Um, I'll mention some of the ones I really enjoy, like In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. is a great um, true crime nonfiction um, book. Um, Alexander Hamilton's a great bio on Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> Um, you also see some um, Georgia Bulldogs um, sports books because I'm a huge Georgia Bulldogs fan. The Lost City of Z is a great book. Um, the Massacre, the Massacre at the Palace is was one of the favorite books I read um, while I was in college. Um, it's basically about um, a prince in Nepal who kind of went crazy and killed most of the Nepalese royal family. Um, it's a very fascinating book, and a lot of these books I will mention are books that were part of my college courses, and um, after I was done with the courses, instead of selling them back to the bookstore, I kept the ones I found really interesting. There at the corner you have the Federalist Papers, which I think any political science major probably read that, and I really enjoyed reading um, the Federalist Papers. A couple of books by Stephen Hawking, um, Stonewall Jackson, and the American Civil War by um, Henderson, which is probably my favorite Civil War book. Um, great, great study of um, the battles of Stonewall Jackson. Rubicon, which is kind of a book about how the Roman Republic transitioned into an empire. Uh, a few other um, books, uh, like Pakistan, that's another book that was a result of a college course I took. Marching through Georgia. Um, I'm from Georgia, so parts of the Civil War that impacted in Georgia um, really interests me. So that book is about um, Sherman's March to the City through Georgia. Peter the Great is um, one of the books I just finished um, most recently and by all, obviously, Czar Peter the Great. Um, Franklin and Winston is a great book about the relationship between um, Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill and how that shaped the course of World War II. Fascinating book. Um, Theodore Rex, a great biography of Teddy Roosevelt. A huge book I had from my college English classes, so an anthology of English literature. Another anthology of literature. Um, the works of Plato. Sorry, the Republic. <laughs> the Republic. <laughs> Plato, sorry. Um, a bio on Doc Holliday. Um, huge, one of my favorite movies ever is Tombstone. That got me really interested in Doc Holliday, so that was a bio I really enjoyed. Some more um, political and history books down here. A history of political philosophy. Oh, this is a that's a truly fascinating read. <laughs> I would say if you're not interested in political science, avoid that book at all cost. Um, as I mentioned with the Federalist Papers, probably another requirement for every political science major is to read Democracy in America by Tocqueville, uh, probably the best book ever written about the political system in America and about just people in general in America is very, very insightful. Um, this book here, Genghis Khan and the Making of the Modern World, is a very interesting examination of Genghis Khan and the uh, Mongol Empire. And that is basically my non-fiction book. All right, next up, because I am a giant, giant Star Wars nerd, um, all the Star Wars books I have, um, I've read probably somewhere between 60 and 70 Star Wars books. I don't have all the books I've read because my sister is also really into Star Wars books, so that kind of help us save money. We kind of rotate on who buys the book, so she'll buy one and then I'll buy the next one that goes out and so on and so on. So I kind of have half, this, half the Star Wars books and she has the other half. Um, I won't mention really the titles on these, so I'll just briefly scan by so you can see the Star Wars books that I have. Shelf number two. Alright, and then next, um, 
um, because I, I'm super organized and I can't stand just books laying around. I actually order the books in the order I'm going to read them. So these are books I haven't read yet, um, but I will be in the near future. So basically when you start on this side, it's the books I'm going to read next as you work down. Um, It'll be a while before I get you. I mean, books at this end, it might be a year or two before I get to you because a lot of times um, if I get a book that I'm really excited about reading, um, I might start you off at the front of the list or if you're a book in a series I'm reading, just so all the info about the series is fresh in my mind, I'll put you to the top of the list. So a lot of times um, nonfiction or standalone books get stuck at this end and it can take a long, long time for those books to work their way up to the front. Uh, for example, this nonfiction book, which is a, a bio of Alexander the Great, I think I've had it maybe for two years, maybe. But anyway, let's see, uh, you got Superpowers, um, David Schwartz, um, Alexander by Theodore Dodge, um, The Maze Runner by Dashner, um, Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton, The Roswell Women by um, Francis Statham, Mathiathan by um, Scott Westerfeld, um, Triumvirate. Um, which is a non-fiction book by Chadwick, The Forgotten Legion by Ben Cain, um, The H.L. Hunley by Tom Chaffin, Dune by Frank Herbert, The Associate by John Grisham. Um, that is a little local book that's published. Really, nobody would have heard of that one. A, Na a Day No Pigs Would Die by Peck, Starship Troopers by Robert Highland, Dandy Day and the Devil by James Riley, um, the Theron trilogy, Star Wars, this is actually a collection of the comics. I've already read the book, but they did a comic series for this specific series within the Star Wars book. Um, the Bridge of San Lou Rey by Thornton Wilder. The French Revolution, A History by Thomas Carlyle. Give Me Back My Legions by Harry Turtledove. 100 Things Bulldogs Fans Should Know. The Artist, The Philosopher and the Warrior. Um, a non-fiction book, which I'm really looking forward to read. And, um, Cyrano de Berziac by Edmund Rostand. Um, so those are the books I've yet to read. All right, lastly, you have a few random things in the bookshelf, kind of extra space I've left up. That's a big um, kind of collector's book of World War II that somebody got me that's too big to fit in with the rest of my books, so it gets its own shelf. Um, bookmarks, all my yearbooks um, from kindergarten until... I graduated from college, so if you want to see what I looked like when I was five or what I want to look like when I was um, 22, <laughs> that's where you'll find that information. Um, another big World War II book that's too big to fit with the rest of my books. And then um, National Geographic. Um, I started subscribing to National Geographic in 1999, and I kind of made a promise to myself that every issue that I got, I would read, read every single article in the magazine, no matter if it did it sound interesting to me or not because it would just be a great way to kind of broaden my horizons and learn a lot and it's really been a, a great great thing I think I did I learned a ton of stuff I would have never done if I had to force myself to do it um, so I've read every single article that's been in National Geographic since 1999 so that's all the magazines and sorry I just noticed one was upside down <laughs> sometimes I had to um, take those out um, I think when I was cleaning the bookshelf so put one upside down but those are the bookshelf and then bottom shelf a couple of random stuff um, I grew up on a farm so these are a couple of random horns from cows um, cow horns do fall off every once in a while so those are that this is a actual bullet from the Civil War that was fired in a battle in um, Georgia and then all my Star Wars collectibles and yes, like I said, I know I'm a nerd. So that was um, a tour of my bookshelf. So I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you have any questions about any of the books you saw, just feel free to leave that as a comment, and I'll answer it as quickly as I can. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video.